I definitely had some denial, you know, that it was happening or, or that um, I couldn't fix it. Uh, I was, there was some bargaining, you know, like, well, if I just, you know, pretzel myself a little bit like this, we can work this out and it'll work out. So I have a couple of stories of endings and rebirths and, and then endings and endings. <laughs> um, so uh, Refuge Recovery Center, where I am the clinical director, uh, we started up, uh, myself and Noah Levine, we started it up within another uh, organization and we had different partners, we had some partners and it wasn't the right fit. You know, there's nothing to say ill will, any direction, just wasn't the right fit. And that was, even though uh, there was a phoenix from the ashes from it, that was very painful. Like, and, you know, um, whether or not to feel one's feelings, you know, you're asking a therapist whether people should, but, you know, and at the same time, um, I didn't want to feel all that stuff. You know, I had, I had a little bit of, you know, the five, it's more the five aspects of grieving nowadays, you know, for a long time it was five phases, but they're not taken in order in that way for the most part. It's like ping pong and it's all over the place. But, you know, I definitely had some denial, you know, that it was happening or that um, I couldn't fix it. Uh, I was, there was some bargaining, you know, like, well, if I just, you know, pretzel myself a little bit like this, we can work this out and it'll work out. Um, there was anger, um, there was definitely sadness, and um, at points it felt more like depression than just sad, and then acceptance, right? And so, and, and I didn't go to acceptance and then stay there, you know, like I went to acceptance and I was like sad again, I was angry again, I a little, did a little bit of den denial. So, and, and so allowing myself to just have all that and to have you know, so I'm someone who has found myself um, at the head of a lot of the different things in my life, you know, regardless whether it's a business or a clinic or a band or, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And so I've always had my team, right? Because, you know, when, if you're in a leadership position, oftentimes you're kind of alone. It's lonely at the top kind of a deal. And I've always had a team like back in New York. I had, I had my, I call them my trilateral commission. I had a Zen monk, my therapist and my uh, sponsor in a 12-step program. And, you know, I could go to one of those three or two of those three or all of those three about anything and everything in my life. So I had the equivalent here in Los Angeles and I went through it and actually where I came to was, I'm out, I'm done. I, I, it, it was a little bit of I'm beaten, but it was also a little bit of just, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm ready to see what's next. And then Noah, being Noah, um, was like, hey, you know, we're going to run the outpatient center out of the meditation center for a while. You know, you want to be clinical? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> and I said, I'll see a few clients for you, but I don't want to do that. And he's like, oh, okay, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll see how long that lasts. And anyway, eventually, of course, it's the way things work with Noah. I just ended up clinical director. You know, it's very, he's got a great smile. So, um, so anyway, so I went into that with him and now we're doing it exactly the way we wanted to do it, right? So, so there is something to be said for fully going through, you know, the, the pain and the difficulty that comes with the ending because, again, from a Buddhist perspective and other perspectives, you know, an ending is just a beginning with ashes attached to it. You know, it's just sort of like, all right, so what, you know, it, everything's impermanent anyway. So that's not a reason to just like throw everything away and stop living. It's a reason, to, you know, it means that I have to, you know, well, what's next? You know, and I thought what was next was anything but running a rehab. And then Noah was like, ah, oh, come on. And, and then I realized, I was like, oh yeah, this was our vision. Our vision was Buddhist rehab, right? What we had done was we partnered up and it was like Buddhist rehab within a bigger structure. So now I don't do anything but what I want to be doing and what I'm good at doing and what I feel is most helpful anyway. And then the other part of it was is that my other, the other part of my, or the big part of my clinical life was having become an EMDR therapist a long time ago. And then almost simultaneously with my 
working with uh, Noah to resurrect refuge, I thought, oh, I'm going to get in contact with my old friend Jamie Marich, who is a very, you know, like an entrepreneur. She's a machine. Um, in terms, she writes books, creates programs, just all this stuff. And she was kind of doing a similar thing, EMDR and mindfulness. So uh, I went to her and was much more fully formed in, in terms of that. And I said, you have an institute now. Would you like West Coast faculty? And she's like, oh, I was hoping that you were thinking that. And so then that brought me to a place of um, sort of entrepreneurial action as an affiliate of you know, her and working with her to you know, deepen this whole thing. And then before you know it, it's like, oh, we better write a book about this. So, so here I am and then I'm writing, we're writing a book together. And then I'm coming back to Noah and one of my original ideas, I said, you know, how about mindfulness is obvious, Buddhist mindfulness is what we're doing here. How about EMDR therapy is the primary clinical thing that we do? And again, this was another thing that's a blessing of working with Noah. He's like, sure, I don't, you know, go, do, I trust you. And so now I'm basically doing everything I've been trained to do, everything that excites me, everything that I think helps to end suffering, you know, all of this. And this is just in the, this is, I think, in less than two years, I just described. And, and the book, the second book, is coming out in August. And it's already, we've gotten you know, some endorsements from people who are like, oh my God, Bruce Springsteen just endorsed my, my record kind of stuff. So, um, so there it is, right? Like feel my feelings from the ending and um, go through that process and then allow for whatever the next process is. And I'm not saying that every time it looks as good as what I just described, but it's definitely worthwhile to, you know, to not give up.